what's up and welcome back to my channel today i thought i would do a really quick get ready with me with the q a well i should say with the cues the questions that you guys have asked me on facebook instagram and here on youtube so let's just jump right in i'm going to get ready for my day and anything that i am using today when it comes to products will be linked down in the description box below if you have any questions leave me a comment on anything but let's just jump in to the questions right away so for starters, I do mix a couple of different foundations, which like I said, I will have them linked below. But I have found for myself, I really like mixing them. Um, it's kind of weird coming at you guys raw faced on camera, but hello, here I am. To answer the majority of the questions that were asked, I'm 33 years old, I'm 5'9", I range between about 138 and 142 pounds. I feel like I have a very athletic build and I do carry quite a bit of muscle for an everyday runner. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. No, I did not grow up here. I actually grew up in Minnesota where I lived for 20 years. I moved to Ohio where I lived for 12 years. And then just about a year and a half ago, I moved to Las Vegas, literally my soul sings for this place yes i love the hot weather that's another question that i got a lot of do you love the dry heat how can you withstand the heat how do you run in the heat yes 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 i love the heat that's why we moved here and that that basically sums up this entire q a just kidding let me put on my foundation and then i'll come back with more products and we'll answer some more questions i honestly have no idea how beauty gurus do that i have like a tiny mirror and i'm and I'm struggling to put on my makeup. So I have some concealer here. I've had this for literally forever, but like I keep saying, everything will be linked down below. So that way, if you wanna check anything out, I try to use all of my makeup to be vegan or cruelty-free. There are some products I have had for a long time that I refuse to throw away until they're gone because I refuse to be wasteful when it comes to anything that I've purchased. So if something I have is not vegan or cruelty free, it will be replaced by that as soon as it's gone. And I just put all my makeup on with this little blender brush or blender, blender sponge. I love it. So that is what I do. And I always keep like a tissue nearby to wipe my fingers off. So yeah, but let's jump in to some more questions. Beginner runners, when is the best time to run was a question that was asked, AM or PM. Honestly, figure out your schedule and where you perform best. A lot of times people have the most energy in the morning. A lot of times people have the most energy in the evening. I am someone who gets it knocked out right away in the morning. I usually get up around 3.45, start running around 4.05, and then try to run till about 5 a.m. unless I'm kind of pushing it, need to do other things in the morning, then I'll cut back a little bit, but I aim for about 30 minutes every single morning if I go a little bit longer that's great if not that's fine but for me I find that I get a surge of energy in the morning I don't need caffeine until later in the day and it just makes me feel really good it makes me feel like I can check that thing off for me first thing in the morning and then I'm done for the day I don't have to work a really long day or you know be low on energy when I come home at night I can then spend the evenings with my husband so figure out what works best for you when it comes to running. Try both. Try AM, try PM. If you're not a morning person, you're most likely going to have a better run in the evening. Do I use energy gels when I run? No. I um, I think I covered this once or twice in another video. I'm just putting some powder under my eyes to set my concealer. But I actually do not use any package products unless I use the Go Macro Bars, which are a link below. I grab those off of Amazon or I get them at Whole Foods or sometimes I even get them at Trader Joe's when they have my favorite flavors in stock. They are a raw vegan like protein slash meal replacement bar. I find they're really easy on my stomach and I really, really like them. Otherwise, I will just use dried fruit. The thing with the gels is that they're so processed and heavy on your stomach a lot of times people feel really good about them when they first use them but after time they kind of sit heavy on your stomach and the liquid to gel ratio is really hard to figure out when you're running and I feel like we don't run enough long runs sometimes to figure out what that ratio is so no personally I don't use them why did I decide on a vegan lifestyle and what motivates me to stay on this path this question kind of goes along with another question that I'm going to answer right away um, I'm gonna kind of combine them so I decided to go plant-based in February of 2020 I was personally dealing with this like 
difficulty of like feeling like I needed to track my food slash I didn't want to track my food anymore and I had been kind of playing around with like plant-based meals and I've been watching plant-based youtubers and I was like you know what I think for Lent I'm just gonna rip off the tracking band-aid stop tracking my food altogether and go plant-based just try something new no I did not go plant-based for Lent because I just loved meat and had to eat all the meat I went plant-based for Lent to remove tracking from my life to take something that I felt like I was kind of addicted to that I felt like was a crutch and that I really really needed and just to let my mind kind of release all of that before February 2020 I've actually spent about a year in weight loss and I lost about 40 pounds I was actually using the Weight Watchers program at the time so I went completely plant-based and if you were like me when you start something new you're excited and you dig into it and I did that like 100% I started watching documentaries about food waste about veganism about animal waste about how we in the US like grow and feed and butcher and all all things when it comes to chickens and eggs and and meat and all of that stuff and it was so much information that after every single documentary I was just left like wow how did I not know all of these details how did I never research this before and I personally felt convicted like I couldn't eat animal products anymore because of the way that they're treated here in the US. If you guys have never educated yourself on those things, I mean, I'm not going to go into details, but I personally only ate chicken, fish, turkey, and eggs, and those are literally like some of the worst. So for me, I just, I didn't feel comfortable eating those things anymore. So I went from calling myself, you know, plant-based to full vegan because of this whole spectrum when it comes to animals. Hashtag vegan for animals, but also vegan for humans. This is another thing I find when with the vegan community is a lot of times I've seen activists live, I've seen them on TV, I've seen them out in person, I've seen them, and a lot of times they treat animals better than humans. And for me, one of the things that I've learned along the way is veganism is not just about how you treat animals, it's also about how you treat waste and clothing and human lives in general. A lot of times with the US and with third world countries all over is they will put factory farming, they will put um, development of industrial items, especially clothing, in poor areas. And then these people have no other choice, no other means of work, so they're forced to you know, provide for their families by working at these places. So it's kind of a double-edged sword if you really think about it. Me personally, I have stopped buying from unethical clothing brands and I've also stopped purchasing meat but at the same time I feel like I'm taking away just a small part for the people that really rely on those jobs so it can be like very full spectrum I have personally I had a question asked like what has changed since you went vegan in your lifestyle I have stopped buying unethical clothing brands I have minimalized my life a lot I have stopped over purchasing things I have become very mindful of the things that I do purchase I've started thrifting I have started donating more of of my of my resources of my money of my items that I can help out in my small community I've stopped eating animal products and I have really found a, a different love for humans as well is to be patient and to just love them where they are like I said I've seen activists out live and sometimes it can be that they treat animals better than they do humans and I want to be one of those people that just you know loves you where you are if you're not on the same path as I am that's okay we are all convicted in different ways um <laughs> to go along with that is what motivates me to stay on this path when it comes to plant-based or being vegan is honestly I'm just one of those people that doesn't need motivation to keep going I'm one of those people that needs like once I've decided to do something I just do it and for me like watching those documentaries educating myself is like the biggest factor when it comes to quote unquote motivation. Uh, I got a lot of questions on when did I start running. Actually my anniversary is this month, November 2016 is when I started running and I got a lot of questions on what is my current running routine. Um, I think I covered that a little bit, but kind of I just get up in the morning, I aim to run for 30 minutes. I don't run every day. I would say like usually on Wednesdays, I typically take a day off from running unless I get home from work a little bit early and my husband is about to go out for a run or to the gym, I might take along. But I'm, I'm, I don't really have an actual routine per se, I just go based on feel. And if that makes me 
you know, run every single day, great, I feel good. If I take a couple days off, that's fine too, but I do try to keep up with it um, as much as I can, at least six days a week, because I love how I feel when I run. It brings me great joy and gratitude, and I love keeping my endurance up. So I'm just combing out my brows. I don't think I've had my brows waxed in like a year and a half, and I've been trying to keep up with them with like the shutdown and the lockdown and quarantine and all that. Let me know in the comments below if you also struggle with thick eyebrows and you're trying to keep up with all that is happening in the world. Is it hard to be vegan when your husband is not? No, and I kind of said this uh, a couple like answers ago, is I just love people where they are. I didn't come out of the womb being vegan. I don't judge people on what they eat because honestly, all I can control is my own little space, my own 142 pounds here on this earth, and that's all that matters to me. I love people where they're at. My husband is really great at trying plant-based foods. He understands where I'm coming from and just because he's not convicted in the same way doesn't make him wrong um, the way we grow up has a lot to do with what we believe in and it's okay if the whole world was vegan that'd be amazing but the whole world isn't vegan and it's probably never gonna happen to be that way so no it's not difficult because he supports me where I am and I just support him back I love him deeper than what he, it goes beyond what he eats to me um, he is a genuinely amazing human being I feel like he really creates a better person within me regardless of what he eats have I personally figured out a formula to eat for weight loss eat for maintenance eat for gaining I think so I feel like most people who have been on this path for a while have by the way I um, am using this beautiful palette that my friend Lauren actually gave to me um, starting out with the color cookie dough I will put that on the screen but this is a palette that you need in your life it is so versatile and it's gorgeous so have I figured out a routine when it comes to weight loss maintenance gaining yes uh, I haven't personally tried to gain weight because I like I said I lost 40 pounds in uh, the year 2019 I'm now dipping into cheesecake and lakes I'm gonna put this on the screen so that way everybody knows what colors I'm using so you can copy this look I did cookie dough all over the um, my lid and then I'm doing the cheesecake and the lakes which is cheesecake is like this this is this is cheesecake right here and then this is lakes so it's kind of like a, a really pretty reddish color and then kind of a brown green olivey color they all all these colors in this palette go really well together but um as I was saying, yes, I think I personally have figured out what works for me, but here's the thing. Everybody's body is genetically different. I know my body really, really well because I used to actually compete in fitness competitions. And this is going to tie into another question that I got, so just hang tight. Um, I feel like I know my body really well. I know that if I eat more vegetables and high starch and low fats, personally right now, I know that it feels me really well. I can maintain my weight, but I also go based on feel. If I'm feeling a little bit fluffy I might cut back a little bit on starches one day if I'm feeling a little bit um, less energy I might add a little bit more if I feel like the scale might be going up I don't weigh myself often I cut out a little bit of bread if I feel like you know what I, these pants are feeling a little bit big I add in a little bit more bread I add in a little bit more veggies I play around with it and I go based on feel it's hard for some people but like I said I did compete in fitness competitions back in the day and that like I said goes into another question I got someone said you seem to be get to get bored or whatever um, when it comes to how you eat you went from macros to Weight Watchers now plant-based like do you get bored or whatever no so I competed in fitness competitions for seven years where I track some sort of macronutrient for seven years then for about three or four years I literally counted nothing then there was a time in there where I gained a little bit of weight about 35 pounds over like my comfortable set body weight and then I decided, you know what? I think I wanna lose a little bit of weight. And that is when I actually started Weight Watchers because I didn't want to track macros. I wanted like an easy way of tracking. I have nothing against Weight Watchers. If you wanna use it, use it. If you don't, don't. But personally, I just have a really hard time tracking um, my food all the time. So that is why I, like I said, during Lent, I cut off tracking. I went into a plant-based lifestyle and found for me, it seems like the best route to go. Not only do I believe in veganism, I believe in the way I eat, but also I feel like I eat a lot of whole food plant-based in comparison to I used to eat a lot of packaged items. I used to eat a lot of convenience foods. So not only do I feel like I'm 
healthier but i also feel a lot lot better okay now that i look like a crazy person i'm going to put on some eyeliner and come back and we'll wrap up this q a all right i went ahead and put on some mascara and eyeliner because I really don't know how the beauty gurus do that while talking because I'm not that big of a multitasker. So I have my makeup on for the day. The palette I use, like I said, will be linked below, but I have a couple more questions. So let me get to answering. Who is your running idol? I have no idea. <laughs> David Goggins, I guess. Um, if you don't know who that is, he's super inspirational and motivating and he's just one of those really hardcore um, individuals who like has a no quit attitude literally like it's very impressive um, I will say I am someone who runs out of joy and gratefulness I am not someone who runs for the same mindset as David Goggins maybe that's just why he came to mind right away because he's so extreme um, he's someone who pushes himself and never leaves anything like left like he, he uses everything in the tank every day and I feel like I do that when it comes to like my everyday life everything that I do not specifically just running but like I give everything I have to my job to my I give everything I have to, every day I feel like to my home to my husband to myself I make sure to give back to myself but I think he has a really interesting perspective when it comes to just like don't give up and give more because you always have more things are gonna get hard things are gonna be challenging and always know that there's like a silver lining involved so I, I don't know he came to mind when you asked you know who's my running idol personally I hate running in the cold wind in the cold rain so sometimes when those either of those things happen I have to remember when he says like the reason I'm out here is because you are not. And for me, I'm grateful that I have lungs that work, that legs that are strong, that a full body that is healthy. So sometimes when the weather is not to my liking and I'm not on my treadmill, um, kind of shutting off and you know, I'm outside in the wind and it's crazy, I have to remember that like, you know what? You can still find a reason to be grateful. The last question I got is, I think one of the most important ones. So I wanted to include this last so I could sit and talk about it. But any tips for someone who wants to go vegan? Um, is it really difficult? How did you make the switch? So for me, like I said, I just kind of dug in and educated myself on everything that happens with factory farming and how we here in the US do those things. And I just felt like it was just really a black and white for me personally if it's new to you and you're struggling with it and you've educated yourself on it just know that you don't need dairy or meat to survive there is thousands hundreds of thousands of people telling you you don't need those things they also come with a very addictive property so if you are someone who's switching over know for the first 10 to 14 days you're going to go through weird withdrawals weird cravings a big thing that i hear is people are um super addicted to cheese I'm personally someone thank God who didn't really like cheese but cheese is very addictive it's addictive for baby cows to come back to their mother and it's addicted to addictive to humans it's actually more addictive they say than opioids which is insane to me if you are struggling and need tips the best thing to do is to maybe not go all whole food plant-based at once if that is the direction you want to go to if you just want to do a vegan lifestyle that's fine there are alternatives to every meat cheese dairy product you could think of under the sun it's the year 2020 we have yogurt we have cheese we have you know chicken chicken product that is not really chicken but looks like chicken that's shredded it's very strange um but there are alternatives to everything dive in try everything maybe whole food plant-based is not the best option for you maybe that is something that is coming down the road if that is your goal for me personally when i went vegan i just swapped all of my regular items out my protein powder became vegan protein powder my dairy products that i did use my yogurts um and what else did i use my sour creams or whatever my dips i just swapped for kate kite hill products or um just different vegan yogurts because i actually really used to like yogurt um when it you know vegan or non-vegan it's something that i actually really enjoyed that i swapped um all of my meat sources became tempeh and tofu and it was really exciting to try different things your freezer department your grocery store is full of them so if you're running out of ideas you're not trying hard enough um yes this will make your grocery budget a little bit more expensive but trying new things when it comes to a whole new lifestyle is exciting and it's fun um, then what I did personally is I just started cutting back on those items and finding that I really enjoyed the whole food plant-based lifestyle a lot more and that's what I usually do about 90% of the time. That's all I have for you today on today's Vlogmas episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow because like I said, it is Vlogmas and I'm really trying to get 25 videos up for you guys for the first 25 days of December. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I will see you tomorrow.